Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. It is 7 in the morning here in Las Vegas where I live. So I figured we would be playing on some snow today. Make me feel a little bit cooler. It's the middle of June. Well, it's actually almost July now and uh, quite hot here. So we are going to be doing some basic rifle training today. A lot of you have requested that I send an updated video for 2021. Uh, the last one I did was 2019, I believe. And there have been some changes to the game. So here it is. We're going to go step by step on how to become a decent shot in this game. I'm going to show you that um, even though I've played for hundreds and hundreds of hours, I'm not a perfect shot either because there's a lot of randomness to it. So here we go. Starting with square one. Um, nothing has changed as far as the basics go. The aiming part of your sight is a little bit different now than it used to be, but uh, we'll get to that. So if you're brand new to the game and you just want to learn how to shoot, all you need to do is just come to the range, find your target. Uh, if you're on the Union, the range is to the north. And if you're Confederate, you can pretty much see the range right from where you're at. So you, you don't really have to go find it. But the Union wants quite a walk away. Thank you, devs, for making our lives miserable. All right, so first things first, you're just going to want to take aim at, let's say, the third set of targets with your rifle, not the first two. These first two are very, very close. You can't really miss them, so third set of targets is where you want to go. Now, the first thing you'll notice is the shots, on most weapons at least, are actually a little bit higher than they used to be. Back in the day, you would want to put the target right in the center of your sight. Now, if you rewind the video, you'll notice that I pretty much was aiming dead on on the bullseye, yet my bullet hit high. Uh, the reason for that is it would seem the developers have switched it so that the sights are a little bit higher up. Um, so what you're going to do, let's try that again. This time I'm going to aim a bit lower on the, on the bullseye. Yep, and that's a lot closer to center. Okay, so that's the 70-yard target, which is not particularly difficult, but if you're new to the game, it's a good start. You want to start on that 70-yard, very simple, but if you want to, quote-unquote, get good, you need to start shooting at the distant targets. Just a heads up, I'm using a Springfield 1855. You can see it there on the bottom right. Last time, I used the 1861, so I figured I'd change it up and go for a slightly older weapon show you guys yes i do know how to shoot other weapons other than the newer issue stuff <laughs> newer as in uh newer during this era 1861 is uh, i think it's 1862 is when the game is okay so if you look off into the distance you can see there's some targets off in the trees i am going to attempt to hit one of those no promises hey all right not bad 126 roughly 125 yards in most cases that is the target that you're going to want to be shooting at as even as a new player. Once you've got a few shots in on the third set of targets, move on to the bigger targets because those are where you're really going to get additional skill. Now, one thing to note, I could take aim perfectly at this target and there's no guarantee I'm going to hit it because there is some randomness despite this weapon. Oh, yep, I missed. Despite this weapon being rifled, it is still a weapon from the 1800s, therefore it's it's not super accurate. Um, there is what you would call a cone of fire coming out, out of it. The further you get from the weapon, the more that cone increases in size. So even if I aim perfectly, there's absolutely no guarantee that I'm going to actually hit the target. So your goal as a new player or as even an experienced player is not to hit the target every time. You're not going to but to hit it as frequently as possible to reduce the chance that the game is going to screw you on accuracy. God dang it, I pulled up at the last second. That was my fault. All right, so those are the basics of firing. So now we're going to move on to some other stuff to just so you're aware. Um, a, lot of the a lot of the questions I get are, if I kneel down and fire, is my shot going to be more accurate? The simple answer is no. Your shot is just the same. It's still a, the same rifle you would be holding if you were standing. The only difference is it's more steady. So I'm coming back here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to kneel down. I'm going to take aim. And look at the rifle, how quickly it steadies out. See how quickly that steadied? So it's much easier to aim while crouched. However, there are disadvantages to that. First, let's see if I can hit it while crouched. And got it right there. 
Eh, eh we, we scratched it. Not bad. 135 yards. Um, so when you're crouched, you're not, you're gonna see here the reload speed is significantly slower. My guy's got more to do because he's on his uh, he's on his uh, crouch position. So it's gonna add about five seconds to your reload. That's one disadvantage to to operating while crouched. Now you could stand every time after you fire while crouched. That is one way to do it. But there is another disadvantage. When you are crouched, if you're shot, even if you're surrounded by a bunch of friends, on the bottom right there, it's going to say <clears throat> skirmishing. Now, it doesn't say that right now because I'm by myself at the drill camp. Yep, it's just me. But if I was near other people, it would say skirmishing. When you're crouching, you can never go above skirmishing. When you're shot while skirmishing, you cost your team additional tickets. So as a general rule, you do not want to be crouched unless you're off in a very small group of people and getting that skirmishing penalty anyway, in which case, yeah, definitely crouch. You're going to be harder to hit. Uh, the other the other thing is um, never go out of line. Obviously, don't don't be by yourself. Now, I'm by myself because I'm at the drill camp. Ooh, not bad. By myself. But uh, if you're in a combat server, this is not Call of Duty. This is not Counter-Strike. This is War of Rights. And you need to be with your unit. You cannot be off by yourself. You'll cost your team an immense amount of tickets if you're shot out of line. So please, if you're going to die, die with people next to you. That's actually a, that's a good general rule for life. Okay, now one other quick tip. Now, anyone who knows me knows it's really strange that I'm firing right now with no bayonet on my weapon. That is because I always have a bayonet on my weapon. Uh, there's two reasons for that. One is it's just you're going to be more prepared in case you get surprise charged by an enemy Rambo, which will definitely happen. But also because bayonet weighs down your gun, it's going to make your shot more difficult. It will not reduce your accuracy, but it will pull on your gun more. So it makes it harder to aim properly, which means when you don't have a bayonet, you're going to be quite an excellent shot because you're used to playing with that handicap. Personally, I recommend you always have the bayonet on your rifle unless you're using a sharps rifle and uh, that, that is not the rifle I'm using right now. This is the Springfield 1855. The Sharps rifle is uh, with the Sharpshooters. I think 42nd Pennsylvania has it, and a couple other regiments have it. It's a beautiful rifle, very good for long range, very accurate, but we're not using that for training today because it would give you an unrealistic expectation of the game. All right, so those are the basics of, of training yourself while while at the range now we're going to move on to a couple drills that i personally do to help increase my accuracy ah there we go still got it to help increase my accuracy when i am on the move now if you've ever played public servers you probably know you're going to be moving a lot in this game running constantly sprinting often at least double quick very often so i'm going to show you something called the sprint drills which they're not the same as football sprint drills but Let's just head over here. Now, it's easy to shoot a target that isn't moving and taking your time. But what happens when you have a limited time in which to shoot them? So what I'm going to do is, if you can see that target there, I'm going to be going for the third set of targets, these guys right here. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to sprint up to that hill, turn around, and give myself only three seconds to fire. Even if I'm not aiming correctly, I have to fire the rifle after three seconds. So here we go. Sprinting with shift, of course, just like any game. Wait, that, that wasn't sprinting. Something's up with the sprint. Let me try that again. Okay. Really? Is it that slow? Is it because of... Uh, interesting. I thought it was faster normally. All right, right about here at the sticks. Turn around. Take aim. One, two, three. Ha <laughs> ha Still hit it. All right, so if you can hit it within three seconds, that's gonna help you a lot if you're being pursued by Rebs or Union, depending on which side you're on, Yankees. Um, or if you are in the thick of battle and your commander says, everyone hold, turn around, take aim, fire. 90% of the time, especially on public servers, commanders do not give their men enough time to aim properly. Uh, this is something I try to avoid as a captain myself. I try to tell my men to aim. And unless we are under heavy fire, I try to give them time to get that proper aim in. But oftentimes you'll get a captain who definitely won't do that. So you need to learn how to fire on the fly. Let's see if lightning can strike twice. Here we go. And sprint. Come on, baby. You got this. You got this. Let's go. 
Right about here, turn around. One, two, three. Wow, I actually didn't think I was gonna hit that one. That, that was pretty wild. All right, now I'm gonna show you one other, which is a little bit easier, and it's crouching while firing, while crouching while turning. Three seconds, same thing. We're just gonna crouch instead of standing. And hopefully I'll be able to get an easier shot because crouching obviously makes it easier. This is really good if you're a skirmisher. You should be practicing these drills, especially if you're in a small regiment and you guys operate in a small group of three to five people. So let's get down here to the thing. Sorry if my voice sounds a little rough. It is seven in the morning after all. All right, there we are. So same thing, we're gonna sprint just like we did before. Go, 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 go. And then when we get to these sticks roughly or right behind them, turn around, crouch. Once we're crouched, one, two, three. Yeah, there we go, 100 yards, perfect. 100 yard shot right behind the sticks. That's where you wanna be. All right, so that is, those are two drills that I've always used to improve my shot. I've spent quite a lot of time down here at the range in the past month. Um, like I said, a lot of you guys requested that I give an updated video. So this is that updated video after many, many hours at the range as well as on fights so that I can get back up to snuff. I've been out of the game for a while, but uh, I'm back. Third US is back, if you know who they are, and uh, we're back in action. All right, so that is those. There's one other thing you can do here on at least the Union Drill Camp. Now, if you're Confederate and you're on the Confederate Drill Camp, it's much easier because you've got a very large open space to fire. There's two ways to get away with that as a Yankee slash Union boy. One is you can either go to the cannon range, the artillery range, which is over there. You can kind of see it blinking on my screen, be bugged out, but it's it looks like that. It's quite a walk, but it's very, very open, so you can shoot at targets that are far away. Um, the other is you can attempt to go deeper into the forest and fire at these targets from within the brush. So let's try that. I don't know if we're going to have any luck. Usually when I fire from back here, I do crouch because I need that extra stability. At this point, those targets are so small, they're going to be hard for you to see on the, on the uh, video here because it just doesn't render them very well. But there is a target right about there. And, well, I got it on the screen, 151 yards. So if you, uh, if you want to increase your accuracy, you keep going further and further back. Try to make things difficult for yourself. Making shots easy is not going to make you a better shot in War of Rights. You need to always be pushing yourself for shots that seem impossible if you want to become a better shot. Um, oh, uh, uh, one other thing. Let's get this reload in here. And we're going to stand. <clears throat> All right, so one other thing to increase your accuracy is waiting that half a second after your reload is done before firing. Now, there is not always a case for this. You want to make sure you get that quick reload in, and I should actually explain that before we go. Now, I'm at the ready right now. You can see my guy is sitting here with his weapon out. He's at the ready. I think I'm playing as the 8th Ohio at the moment. And he is ready to fire. Now, if I'm already at the ready position, I can hit that aim, and my aim is actually better. Let's get that shot off. I waited too long. All right. Now, if I'm reloading like this, and I'm in a huge hurry, or I think I'm in a hurry, and I just go to aim immediately after reloading, as in, like, at the moment, I'm holding the right mouse button. So, the moment my guy's done reloading, he's going to aim. That will actually reduce my accuracy. Well, not my accuracy, but my, uh, that will increase my weapon sway and make it more difficult to aim. Because my guy wasn't already at the red. He just went from reloading to that position. So, instead of that, we want to, of course, if we have time... Try to wait until you've you've been at the ready for at least a second. And you'll see here, I'll, I'll show you. So we're reloading. Da, da, da. Every reload adds 30 seconds to my video. All right, now watch. As soon as he's done reloading, gotta wait a second for the weapon to steady out. There. We got steadied. Now we take aim. No promises. Oh, I have a bad feeling about that one. Yep. You kind of know when it's not going to hit. You, you can tell your weapon's fighting you too much that time around. One thing you can do is if you're aiming and you could just feel the weapon is just being a, a butthole that time, just stop. It's called recovering and then try again. 
if you have the time. If you're in combat, don't do that. Just take a shot. If you don't hit the enemy, you still suppress them. Suppression is a very real thing in this game, and it's very effective. This is one thing I teach my guys on firing in lines, is it's not always about hitting the enemy, though we will try. Um, it's, it's just as useful to suppress them. So if you're firing close to them, they're still going to be suppressed. Their screen gets all black and white, and they start shaking, and they can't really hit anything. Okay, so one other thing to show you. This is the perfect reload. This is something I show people on my drill server whenever they come and visit. And it's called the perfect reload because your hand generally goes through the model of the gun if you're doing it quick enough. What that is, is right after I fire, literally the moment after I fire, milliseconds, I'm going to hit reload. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to wait to see if I hit the enemy because there's no way to really tell unless they're close. I'm just going to reload my weapon the instant after I fire. You might be in a regiment where your commanding officer tells you when to reload, that's fine. If you're not, or if you're in my regiment, I rarely will tell you to reload. You just are expected to do it like a big boy or girl. So what we're going to do, we're going to fire, and right after I fire, I'm going to try to hit that reload. If I do it right, you should see my hand somewhat go through the rifle. Okay, you know, it's hard to see. But that is the perfect reload. You don't want to wait. You want to fire. You want to basically fire and then hit R for reload. Get that down to muscle memory. If you have it in muscle memory, it's going to be a lot easier. I've done it for so many years now. I just, it's that's how I always fire. <laughs> I always fire and reload. I don't really have uh, another way of doing it at this point. There we go. Now I'm starting to hit it again. And also, keep in mind, your weapon is going to foul up the more shots you fire. If you survive long enough to have fired 30 or 40 shots, your weapon is not going to be as accurate because it's going to be all gummed up and dirty. And you'll notice the barrel, for, for instance, is going to be really dirty looking. So that is um, not going to happen very often. Thankfully, you die very frequently in this game. But if you are one of those folks who survives through the end of your ammunition, then that may very well happen to you. You might actually get to the point where your rifle is very fouled up. And um, there's people who've asked me, what do I do in case that happens? Or what do I do in case I run out of ammo? If you run out of ammo, you need to die. <laughs> um, preferably not by charging by yourself, because if you're out of line, obviously you cost your team a bunch of tickets. But uh, ask your commanding officer. Sometimes you can get TK'd by... Uh, one thing we do is we'll team kill the guy who's out of ammo. Is that way he's in line if he dies? But uh, it just depends on the situation. Generally, team killing is not a good idea. So just ask your commanding officer what to do if you run out of ammo. That won't happen very often, I promise. You will die usually before that happens. Okay, so we're gonna do one more parting shot. All right, sweet. So last shot of the video and I made it in. Well, that's it guys. That is some of the stuff that you'll need to know for advanced rifle. You'll need to learn how to fire while crouched. You'll need to learn the disadvantages of firing while crouched. Sprint drills are very helpful for learning to fire on the fly. And, of course, having a bayonet on. It is really weird that I don't have a bayonet on, so. Oh, I do. Oh, nice. Thanks for the bug. All right, well, sometimes that'll happen, too. If you hit T, it'll tell you if you have a bayonet on. There's a little B next to my weapon. So I did have a bayonet on. It was just bugged out, and I couldn't see it. That's a bug that's been in this game forever, and I don't know if they'll ever fix it. But, uh, yes, play with a bayonet on. Do your sprint drills. Don't bother with these first three targets once you've taken a few shots. Just stick with the far targets. And if you really want to train yourself, go find a distant area to camp out and fire at the targets from there. And you'll feel good when you hit those targets, especially if you get a bullseye and you're at 200 yards or some crazy distance back. Um, oh, one other thing before we go. Your, your weapon does have bullet fall. There is definitely bullet fall in this game. However... Before about 100 yards, there is negligible bullet fall. So these targets here that I'm aiming at, I'm just barely starting to aim higher than I normally would. Uh, the bullet fall really kicks in after 100 yards. So if you're shooting at the 125s, you just want to aim slightly above the bullseye. And with this gun, the 1855, as well as the 1861, the Enfield, most other rifles, you want to put it near the top of your sights not above the sights but very near to the top the uh, devs moved the targeting up slightly on most of the guns they also increased or decreased the sway of your gun which is kind of nice so all right that's it guys that's uh, all for this video i want to keep it short and sweet although it's already 
on my screen almost 20 minutes. Enjoy and have fun shooting. If you have any questions, you can add me on Steam. I'm XP Walker, obviously. And uh, you can also find me on Discord. I'll, I'll link the Discord here. And hopefully the link will work for you. I think it's permanent. So I'll see you guys in-game. And have a great day.